With Talk To Me now available to stream, my friend and I sat down to watch. And then my friend got up and left because of how disturbed he was. Seriously, this film is wild, and if I didn't have the urge to make this video, I may have left as well. But that's not because it's a bad film. It was great, if you can bear its brutality and traumatic themes. You'll start to see an incredibly well-crafted film. With that being said, I do want to give a trigger warning for the rest of this video for topics of violence, drug abuse, and suicide. Today, we're going to review and explain the events of the film, take a look at the themes and filmmaking techniques used, and explore some unsettling theories. And make sure to check the description for timestamps if you've already seen the film and do not need the recap. Now, Talk To Me was released to theaters in July of 2023. The film was directed by Danny and Michael Filippo, who started as YouTubers and features Sophie Wilde as Mia and Joe Bird as Riley. The film follows a group of teens who find a plaster hand, said to be an embalmed hand of a medium, that, when held, allows them to communicate with the dead. However, they can only hold the hand for 90 seconds. Any longer, and the spirits that they connect with will want to stay. Our group includes the main character Mia, who is struggling with the loss of her mother, Mia's best friend Jade, Jade's younger brother Riley, Jade's current boyfriend Daniel, and the two in possession of the plaster hand, Haley and Joss. At a party at Joss's house, the rest of the group has their first interaction with the hand. According to the ritual, a candle must be lit to open the doorway to the spirit realm. Then, someone must hold the embalmed hand and say, talk to me. Then, they must say, I let you in, for the spirit to enter their body and communicate with others in the room. To end the ritual, the possessed person's hand must be removed from the embalmed hand and the candle should be blown out to close the door. However, when Mia does this, the spirit that enters her body becomes fixated on the young Riley in the room. The spirit then acts aggressively when Josh tries to remove Mia's hand from the embalmed hand and the ritual goes slightly over the 90 second mark. Later that evening, it is hinted to us that the spirit has followed Mia as it appears in her spot on her bed. The next evening, Jade's boyfriend is interested in doing the ritual, so a small gathering is held at Jade's house. Everyone aside from Jade, Riley, and Riley's friend partake in the ritual numerous times in an immaculate montage that shows many humorous yet unsettling interactions with the spirit and is paired with the most glorious sound I've heard in my life. Eventually, despite being scared shitless the night before, Riley asks to do the ritual. Jade is against it, but once she leaves the room, Mia agrees that he can do it for 50 seconds. However, when Riley allows the spirit into his body, it speaks to Mia as if it was her dead mother. Haley informs Mia that 50 seconds has passed, but Mia wants to know if the spirit has anything else to say. Shortly after, Riley begins convulsing and showing signs that things are not going to end well, and yet nobody does anything. Then, Riley begins to smash his head violently against the table, and again, nobody does anything. I was so annoyed by this scene because while I understand it is a shocking situation, I feel like there were plenty of people there who could have helped Riley and prevented so much pain. Eventually, Riley beats and bloodies his face badly enough that he passes out, although it seems as if he could be dead, and yeah, that sent me through a loop. And Riley is then brought to the hospital after having held onto the hand for nearly two minutes. Riley's mother and sister Jade are furious at Mia, with the mother believing she gave Riley some sort of drug and things go down hill fast. Mia continues to see the spirits that followed her from the first seance, and once Riley wakes up he tries to kill himself again, the teens then meet to discuss their options and end up talking to Cole, the brother of a man named Duckett who killed himself at the beginning after being in contact with the hand. Cole tells them that after some time, if Riley is still alive, the spirits will go away, but if Riley dies, he will join them. Later that night, Mia sees her mother's spirit. At this point, we've been told that her mother died of an accidental overdose, that her body had fallen in front of the door, and that Mia's father had to bang on the door with all of his strength to get it open. However, the question of if Mia's mother had committed suicide is in the air. But in this interaction with her spirit, Mia's mother says that she did not kill herself, and that Mia has to save Riley by putting him out of his misery. Later, Mia's dad reveals that he wasn't entirely honest about her mother's death and confirms that Mia's mother committed suicide. Mia is really hurt by this and retreats to her room where her mother's spirit tries convincing her that she hasn't killed herself and that her father isn't really her father, but a spirit trying to kill her. This prompts Mia to stab her father in the neck and go to the hospital to see Riley. 
Once she is there, she tricks Jade into going to her house to meet up with her and convinces Riley's mom to give her a moment alone with him. Unable to stab him to death, Mia thinks back to a moment she shared with Riley earlier in the film when they had seen a kangaroo that had been hit by a car slowly dying on the side of the road. Riley had told Mia to put it out of its misery, but she couldn't. This gives her an idea and a sense of purpose for putting Riley out of his misery. At this point, Jade has found Mia's father, still alive, realizes what is happening and rushes to the hospital where she finds Mia pushing Riley towards a busy street in a wheelchair. As Jade runs up to them, the screen cuts to black and we hear tires screeching. When the visuals return, we see Mia lying in the road, looking relatively unmangled. But as she stands up, she is seemingly teleported to the hospital hallway. Here she walks around and looks into a room that shows an alive and well Riley. Eventually, she comes across a mirror, but cannot see her reflection, which highlights how nightmarish the situation is, as earlier Mia had talked about a reoccurring nightmare in which she cannot see her reflection. She also sees her father walking through the hospital and going up an elevator, and the hospital fades away. In a dark room, a candle is lit, and Mia walks up to it where she can see a person holding out their hand. She grabs this hand, and the film ends, making it clear that she has died and is now on the side of the embalmed hand. So now that we've laid out the basics of the plot, let's do a brief explanation of what was really happening, especially at the end, and address some theories. Mia's mother was never communicating with her. The spirit that attached to Mia was the drowned woman from the very first seance that Mia took part in. This spirit masqueraded as her mother in order to manipulate her, which is evident by the underwater sound effects that were used whenever Mia was alone or saw the spirit. Additionally, what is assumingly the spirit of an old man attached to Riley during the seance where he went over 90 seconds. It was mentioned that if you die while the spirits are in you, then you stay with them forever. And it was very clear that the spirit of the old man wanted that of Riley as he instantly tried to make Riley kill himself. Seeing as the old man's spirit was not successful, and that the drowned woman's spirit could easily manipulate Mia because of her grieving state, Mia was put to the task of killing Riley. Instead, Mia ends up killing herself and is put in some sort of limbo plane of existence. Here, she sees Riley recover, and since Cole said that the spirits weaken the longer you live, I'd say Riley is alive and well. We have evidence that Cole was right as the spirit attached to Mia actually does weaken throughout the film. After it takes the form of her mother, you can see that her mother's ghost weakens and slowly shifts back to its soaking wet, drowned form. She then finds herself in a dark void and her spirit has been trapped behind the hand. Now, to briefly get into some of the speculations and theories, let's talk about Mia's father. The ambiguity of the fate of Mia's dad is really cool. His presence at the hospital elevator can be interpreted as him leaving the hospital because Jade managed to call an ambulance and help him, or that he is taking the elevator up to the afterlife and Mia can't follow him because she is stuck in limbo. Because he is all alone and isn't surrounded by family, doesn't leave the hospital from the same place that Riley does, and is shown in the hospital but looks completely fine, I am under the belief that this could absolutely mean that he died. But I don't like that. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to tell myself that this shows he has recovered. In terms of the spirits, there is a question of whether or not the spirits are all just people or if there may be demonic entities as well. From what we've seen in this movie, I'm personally under the impression that they're just people. We see many of them laughing and having fun in those 90 second seances, but then again some are aggressive. I personally think that difference is just a matter of what spirit happens to appear to you. Human people are perfectly capable of doing demonic things. Additionally, it has been speculated that the odd noises, choking, screams, and whatnot that first occur when people allow a spirit to enter their body is the spirit acting out how it died. So with Mia, she was making a choking, drowning noise, and then the drowned woman was there. In Riley's case, this sort of behavior happened twice. This is really unusual, and it could be that Mia's mother was genuinely there at first. But then this evil old man that the drowned woman mentioned had taken a liking to Riley forced her out. And that was when Riley started to convulse again as the old man acted the way he was when dying. Since it had already been 90 seconds and this old man was some sort of creep, it was able to possess Riley and wanted to kill him in order to keep him in that limbo space forever. Now, this idea does raise another important question. 
That is, would it be that this limbo space isn't just for those who die or commit suicide due to possession, but for everyone who has committed suicide? Now, before we talk about the important themes and techniques used, I want to express my overall opinion. I love how active this movie is. From the opening scene until the very end, this movie is constantly throwing stuff at you. Furthermore, the film's characters do not feel fake, as characters in horror films usually do. The character development and interactions supplement the events of the film perfectly so that viewers actually care about and feel fear for what will happen to the people on screen. While it might not be a masterpiece, Talk To Me achieves its goals and employs meaningful cinematic techniques to highlight its main theme. And it definitely is one of the best horror films in recent years. My interpretation is that grief and the lingering presence that death has on people is the driving theme of this film. Additionally, addiction and drug abuse play incredibly important roles in the theme and are highlighted by references to Mia's past and the seance itself being a sort of euphoric experience for the teens that parallels drug use. Using the hand and communicating with the dead is especially enticing to Mia, who doesn't feel excitement from much of anything after the loss of her mother. She becomes addicted and is desperate to talk with her mother or chase the high, no matter the cost. Even after she sees her life falling apart, she convinces herself that going back to the hand is the way to solve the issue created by the hand. Though, when dealing with addiction, it is important to look for root causes. In Mia's case, this root cause seems to be the lingering death of her mother. She feels guilty and is confused about the events surrounding her mother's death, so much so that she's hardly been able to properly grieve. This leaves her incredibly vulnerable and is why she turns to the embalmed hand, why the spirit uses her mom to manipulate her, and why there are constant sounds and imagery of banging and scratching on doors, water, complementary colors, parallels, and mirrors. This leads us to how sound techniques play into the theme. Ever since the first seance, when Mia is possessed, we hear these muted sounds over and over again when Mia is stressed or overwhelmed, highlighting her vulnerability and the spirits, or deaths, lingering presence. Moving on to more image-based techniques, there are visual cues, parallel stories, and foreshadowing that contribute to the theme. The ending of the story is essentially told in short at the start, as Duckett is manipulated by the spirits into thinking that he must kill his brother to save people. He tries to kill his brother and then kills himself, just as Mia does with Riley. Additionally, mirrors play an important role and tie into the parallels, as while possessed, Mia often sees her mom through reflective surfaces like windows and mirrors, which parallels a conversation at the start between Jade and her mother that is shot through a mirror. Also, Mia's reoccurring nightmare involves having no reflection in a mirror, which highlights how important of a symbol the mirrors are for the themes of life and death covered in the film. Furthermore, I've already mentioned how the kangaroo situation reflects Mia's struggle. That part is made rather clear in the film. But the kangaroo also visually parallels and directly foreshadows Mia's struggle and death as the kangaroo was struck by a car and literally lies in the exact same spot on the road as Mia does when she dies. Now, taking a closer look at imagery in terms of color, color plays a major role in symbolism and film. It is important not to assign one meaning to each color, however, as they can be used alone or together to signify one thing at one point and another at another point. In Talk To Me, the main colors are blue and yellow. The color blue often symbolizes calmness, coldness, depression, faith, and water. The color yellow often symbolizes wisdom, joy, relaxation, betrayal, illness, and hazard. Furthermore, artistic rules tell us to use complementary colors to highlight things, and since the majority of the film is blue, yellows and oranges complement that. That is why Mia is always shown in yellow. It highlights her detachment from the rest of the world, a detachment that grief can cause. Furthermore, scenes that are warmer and more yellow allow Mia to blend in, such as when she's at Jade's house, which shows connection while scenes where Mia does not feel connected, as with her father, are dominantly in blue and her father is shown out of focus. Additionally, the spirits that appear to Mia are shown in blue tones to show how the connection that she feels with her mother's spirit is false. However, there are a few instances where Mia isn't wearing yellow. 
The night after the first seance, in which Mia goes over the 90 second mark, she is wearing a green sweater. This could highlight the blending of Mia's yellow and of the spirit's blue, as the spirit is now with her. Furthermore, Mia dies wearing white, and is brought into a black void where she remains an outlier even in death. And now the only way for her to get human connection is from a bright yellow candle. Looking at another interpretation of yellow's association with Mia involves looking at another thing that the color symbolizes. Yellow is a warning color. Mia herself is a warning sign. She needs help, comfort, and a support system. And just as she couldn't help the kangaroo, her friends couldn't or didn't notice enough to help her. And she is left for dead, as is the kangaroo. Now, this serves as a message or a warning to the audience as well. When watching a movie, the struggles that the characters are going through are often put out on a silver platter. They're right in front of us. However, the odds are that we may not notice people in our actual lives struggling with similar things. So it is just incredibly important to show support for people who can't support themselves. Mia is our warning sign. Our check-in on your friends. We cannot help the fictional character, but we can help the people that she represents. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap it up here, so thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you have any thoughts to add, or movies you'd like me to take a look at next, leave a comment below. Also, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to support me. As always, be good people, love others, and love yourselves. Peace.